Okay, the topic of today's video is 10 things I love about my Indian Chief Dark Horse and 5 things I don't. Okay, so 10 things I love about my Indian Chief. Well, actually there's 12. Um, I'm just here at uh, Smeaton, actually, a nice little country town that I like to ride through from time to time. And it's just a perler of a day. It's, uh, I don't know, it's probably about 12 degrees, but or 10 degrees, but at least it's blue skies, sunshine, light winds, uh, just really, really nice. So the first thing is the way the bike rides. It's just such a, pleasing pleasant uh, just a really nice riding bike i think indian have really got the suspension um, set up spot on for this bike when i say a nice riding bike i mean for a cruiser because uh, it's not a touring bike it's never going to ride like a touring bike it's not intended to ride like a touring bike but if you can get a low slung cruiser like this Indian Chief to ride the way this bike rides I think it's it's quite an achievement and yeah I have um, no problems with the way this bike rides at all now number two is the way it handles at low speed it's just um, it's so well balanced it's just really I can just ride along at you know walking pace and it just sits there nicely balanced uh, I'm not sort of wobbling to try and keep it upright. I can just come to a stop nice and slowly and just gently put my foot down. Such a well-balanced bike and so capable at low speeds, which, you know, it looks like a long bike, but I think it's um, it looks long because it's low to the ground. But the way it's weighted and its centre of gravity and um, or centre of mass, whatever you, you want to say, it really really rides nice at low speeds now number three is seat comfort um, when i test rode the bike i found the seat to be uh, comfortable and you know it's you ride it for an hour or two and you sort of think yeah that's that's a test ride but what's it going to be like at longer distances and yes yeah, still i'm still waiting for it to sort of become uncomfortable but um it's comfortable you know I, I have no complaints with the seat at all I've spent two hours on the seat and I have noticed that it's it's starting to sort of um, shape to my rear if you like and is compressing a little bit in the middle which is working to actually hold me in the seat it's giving me a little bit of a little bit of a, a bolster on the rear here so I, it just sort of holds me in the seat now a little more than sort of sitting on top of the seat so that's great it's it's wearing in really nicely I had thought about getting the comfort seat um, as a backup as an option I would like to get the comfort seat just to try it out and see what it's like because I have heard it's more comfortable than the stock seat but uh, I'm in no rush you know the, um, this seat is working really well for me I think I think that's it in general I'm, I'm waiting to find things I don't like about the bike but the more I ride it, the more I like it. Yeah, it's it's turning out to be a pretty good bike. Now, the next thing on my list is torque. The way this bike pulls, um, it's just torque everywhere. Yeah, at 162 newton meters of torque at uh, 3,100 from memory RPM. It's it's just got torque everywhere. So you can be in um, sixth gear at 100 k's on the highway or 62 miles an hour, and twist the throttle and away you go you don't have to drop down a gear it's just uh that's that's really nice and the torque pulling out of corners is excellent as well so this 116 cubic inch or 1890 cc v-twin engine which is oil and air cooled uh, it pulls like a train from everywhere so number four is torque now number five is engine smoothness um when I test rode the Chief, I did notice a little bit of vibes around 3000 RPM. 
and it's, it's not nothing major it's just something you pass through as you're going through the revs you don't you're not really sitting at that rev range on the highway or anything like that and at the start of running this engine in uh, i did i did feel vibes around 3000 and uh everything was stiff everything was new so uh, you know i had to um just be patient with it and i just thought i'll just see what happens and i've now done 1300 kilometers and uh the vibes have settled right down so i don't notice anything now untoward um it's nice and smooth everywhere i ride it i i, I I think if I went looking for them, I would find those vibes at around 3,000, but I don't notice them now, so uh, that's not an issue to me. So uh, the engine smoothness is number five. Now, number six is the way it sounds. Uh, I really like the sound of the, the exhaust note of this bike, and I love the way it, um, it idles. It's really lumpy and uh, just sounds super cool so I think they've got the sound dialed in 100% for sure on the Chief but one of the things I don't like is also the sound because even though at idle at low speeds uh, it sounds really really good as soon as you get moving you know over 30 uh, 40 kilometers an hour you can't hear the exhaust note anymore and all I hear is the engine noise. So I love the sound of it. I just wish it had more volume at speed. So when I'm riding along that I could hear that exhaust note somehow come through to me. So I think at some point I will put some mufflers on it just to open it up a bit. And I have been looking at a few different options and you know, geez, there is, I thought that the choice might be limited, but there's actually quite a range you can get for the Chief ranging from you know around a thousand dollars up to four and a half thousand dollars so i think i might make a separate video on uh, slip-ons that you can get for the chief and systems because there's there is quite a range and uh, there is quite a range of budget as well i think people would find that useful and i have been in contact with a few of the exhaust manufacturers i'll cover that in another video i think now number seven is suspension but i've already really touched on that um i'm really happy with the suspension setup on the bike the front works well it's not adjustable at all but the rear is adjustable and i have adjusted the preload down two millimeters so just to um, take a bit of tension out of the shock because i did find it was a little bit hard for my weight which is 77 kilograms without my riding gear and i just was just a little bit hard riding over bumps and that so i just took out two millimeters of uh, tension or preload off the the rear shocks that's probably the sweet spot. I actually went three millimeters and that was a little bit too soft then. There's a bit of a little bit of a mismatch between the front, the rear and the front in handling wise. So I put it back to two millimeters and I think they're still I still get a good ride off the rear without it being too different from the front handling wise. So I think that's a good option. So number seven, suspension. Now number eight is looks and styling. Uh, these are not in order, by the way. Um, it looks and styling is probably number one, but uh, number eight on my list is looks and styling. And, you know, I think this bike looks absolutely fantastic. And I reckon Indian nailed uh, the design of this. Uh, for me, I was looking for a cruiser. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I was looking for a cruiser uh, as my next bike. And I don't know, something about the design of the Indians versus harleys that for me harleys have become really smoothed off really well finished really i don't know rounded off a little bit if you like and i find the styling of this bike in particular the indian chief dark horse to be sort of more sort of rawer more brutal uh i don't know it's just 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 a bit tougher i reckon in for me now the harley guys are probably going to be uh, jumping up and down at this particular moment but that's the way I feel and I don't know it's just it just to me is a is, is a tougher looking more raw more brutal looking bike than what Harleys are producing at the moment and to me it's just more old school which I really like you know I could see myself down a track putting on some uh, pullback bars or something and you know and, and uh, customizing it if I wanted to just for more comfort but 
uh, as it is at the moment it's staying as it is I'm very happy with the way it is the way it rides if I start changing bars or anything like that then it's going to change the character of the bike and I don't want to do that I, you know I really uh, fell in love with this bike as it is and the way it rides as it is so uh, down the track I might start experimenting but for now I think um, I'm gonna leave it as it is yeah I'm happy with it as it is now number nine on my list is this screen Now this screen doesn't come standard with the chief dark horse I put that screen on and this is the 17.8 inch tinted screen and uh, boy has that made a difference to the ride in terms of just taking all the pressure off my body uh, when I did the test ride on the bike you know I could feel the uh, wind pressure on my chest on my arms and um, even, even at 110 kilometers an hour or 70 miles an hour uh, the wind pressure I could see I could say I was going to get fatigued pretty quickly just hanging on uh, hanging off the bars right away I thought if I bought this bike it'd be put I'd be putting that screen on it and I think I really like the look of the screen well I, I do really like the look of the screen I think it works uh, beautifully with this bike yeah they've done a great job again and of capturing that old school style of screen uh, but it's still efficient and works really well now it's not perfect you know I still get wind around my helmet and things like that but it's not um, the sort of wind that pushes your head around it's just noise uh, but I'm prepared to put up with that a uh, little bit of noise for uh, how much easier that screen makes my ride you know I feel like I can sit on the bike all day with that screen because there's no pressure on my body at all I'm just sitting there um, enjoying the ride basically now number 10 on my list is the way it shakes I really like the way this engine shakes around at idle it just sits there and rocks and shakes and shakes the whole bike it's that that old school sort of feeling again like uh, like the old Harleys had before they went to the Milwaukee eights where the the old evolution engines would just sit there and and shake the whole bike while it's sitting there at the lights and I remember I was on a ride and uh, this uh, lady pulled up on her Sportster and the Sportster was mint chrome everywhere you know paint shining glistening and she's sitting beside me at the lights and I'm on my Vulcan Vaquero and it's just you know buttery smooth just idling away there and I look across at her bike and it's shaking like you wouldn't believe you know and it just it was just so cool with every every firing of the of each piston the bike would just shake and rock and I thought that was really cool and this this captures that essence I reckon this 116 engine um, does that uh, when you're sitting at the lights or you're sitting there on the bike idling the whole bike is shaking and I, I really 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 like that now number 11 on my list is build quality this bike is really well built the finish of the welds uh, the powder coating on the frame uh, the finish on the engine the I don't know it's just everything about the paint everywhere I look uh, I'm, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing and uh, yeah there's not much more I can say other than that that the build quality is no problems at all fantastic uh, I'm very happy now one of my things I don't like is build quality now let me explain when the bike comes from the factory the uh, frame has a few points where you can mount like here for instance you can mount the pillion passenger pegs and there's some bolt holes here where the forward controls can mount on now um, when it comes from the factory it doesn't have anything in those holes so those uh, threads are machined and exposed on the front now I did notice that they um, were starting to get a bit of surface rust on them those holes so I wish that Indian would uh, put some blanking bolts or something in those holes just to protect them from the factory and what I've done is I've put I went and bought my own bolts and there this one here is one I've put in that's uh, a bolt here button head bolt and I've put two button heads here in the rear now they're M10 with a standard pitch 1.5 millimeter I think from memory and these two are 20 millimeters long this one here is 25 millimeters long because I wanted this to go right through the frame the, the bolt hole goes right through the frame and I want as much thread as I can get on it and I've also put a couple of o-rings just under the bolt head so I could 
snug them down and without marking the uh, powder coat. Uh, same on here. And I put some just WD-40 on the threads uh, just in and out a few times just to... Uh, I, I did clean off the rust with a wire brush or surface rust off the threads before I put them in and then put a WD-40 and then screwed the bolts in. On this one I, I, I bought some CRC soft seal I think it is from memory and I'll show you the can here and it's supposed to uh, you spray it onto the threads and it sort of um, thickens up and becomes like a plasticky sort of protection coat over the whatever it's coating and it's for machine threads and it's for shipping products with machine threads and stuff like that I did the front bolts but oh man it was sort of I did it in a well ventilated area I was outside the, the wind was blowing but geez it just attacked my throat and it was just my throat was all scratchy and that for the rest of the night so I didn't do that on the rear bolt so I just um, uh, went with WD-40 on the rear bolts. If you do have a dark horse I was thinking I might put together I could put together uh, a little bolt kit a blanking bolt kit and say sell it for $15 where you get the two bolts for the front four bolts for the rear some o-rings and a little bit of um, maybe even some white lithium grease or something just to put on the bolts because so I think it would be wise to do that if Indian don't to do that to your own dark horse if you buy a dark horse uh, right from day one just to seal those holes up so that's that's number two of the things I don't like so uh, one is a lack of exhaust note and the two is the uh, the way they leave those holes open and number 12 of the things I love about this Indian Chief it's a simple thing but you know sometimes the simple things just uh, just just make your life so much easier and that is this kickstand the uh, stand is sort of is is well, for me and my size it's a, it's a little bit out there forward of the bike and you can see it does come forward of the bike which I really like uh, it just feels so much more secure than than like the Harley stands that come out at right angles for the bike I never ever trust those stands uh, for some reason I just don't feel comfortable with them I know they have a locking pin and they can't supposedly go forward or back I just don't like them um, I like my stands to be forward for the bike so I know it, when you uh, swing the, the stand forward it locks in and, and it's it's secure and then when you're on the bike it's got this little lip on here I don't know if you can pick that up and you just put your, your toe on that pull the stand back up and it flicks back up out of the way and yeah they've really got this well sorted and worked out so number 12 is the kickstand surprisingly enough now I've mentioned two of the things I don't love about the Indian Chief um, what are the other things I had okay so yeah so the open bolt holes I don't like I wish they would just put blanking bolts in them from the factory uh, number two on my list is accessories pricing I just wish they were cheaper and I don't know if um, like for instance I bought this uh, locking fuel cap I think it retails in Australia for around two hundred dollars now um, that's pretty pricey now, they did give me a little bit of a discount off it and they gave me a little bit of a discount off the screen but yeah when you buy a screen you got to buy a screen and these quick release brackets so the good thing about that is uh, when I if I decide to go a larger screen the mounting points are already there all I have to do is just buy the larger screen and, and clip it on if I want to go say do a little touring or something and want more wind protection the options there but uh, it's not cheap the parts and accessories are not cheap so that's one thing I don't love I just wish they were cheaper because then you know, even the um, if I wanted to get the little passenger pillion seat which goes on here that's uh, $450 Australian the comfort seat is $550 which is a, a larger seat that goes here and I, I actually don't think that's too bad we can when you consider the uh, pricing of Mustang seats and uh, what have you so I don't think that's too bad but yeah the, a lot of the, the accessories are very expensive because I, I would like to get you know accessories for the chief and just try them out test them out and do reviews on them and uh, you know let people know who would they would work for and and who they wouldn't etc but just the cost is just makes it too prohibit prohibitive 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 yeah, it's just too expensive. Now, number three on the things that I don't love is the battery. I wish the battery had more cranking power. It's fine once the engine's warm, 
but if the engine's cold it uh, it'll turn over and just pause and then kick and sometimes it fires and sometimes it doesn't and then when I press the starter button again it always fires but the first crank over when it's cold um, yeah the battery just doesn't seem like it's got enough cranking power so uh, I wish they would put a battery in it that had more cranking power I don't keep my bike on a tender because I'm riding it all the time and it's charging all the time uh, actually let's have a look and just see what the volts are at the moment so if we flick through we flick across to the screen it'll tell me yeah 12.6 volts so um, that's okay only other thing I'm doing is too is I'm doing about five liters per hundred kilometers and I'll put the US MPG conversions there so uh, I think that's not too bad for this size engine this size bike uh, I'm not I'm happy with that I think for uh, for the size of the engine and the capacity I think five liters per hundred kilometers is, is pretty good someone's just fired up a mower I don't know if you can hear that but anyway we're just about finished so that's okay now the last thing I don't love about my Indian Chief is condensation in the headlight uh, I have sent up to about here but uh, obviously the sun's sort of burning off at the moment but um, I have seen a few uh, Chiefs with that condensation in the headlight and it seems to be a common thing so I will mention it to the guys next time I see them and see what they think um, if that's an issue um, I don't know it's, it's, it's not particularly bothering me but um, if it could cause issues down the track well then obviously I want to get it sorted out now but uh, yeah that's, that's number five of things I don't love I think I might have picked uh, one of the busiest sections of Smeaton for wildlife and vehicles and traffic but it is what it is okay so I for a truck to go past so summing up um, you know the fact that I've got 12 things I love so in summing up the fact that I've got 12 things I love and only five things I don't love I think says says it all really I really 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 like my Indian Chief and the more I ride it the more I enjoy it and the better it gets normally you have a honeymoon period and you know you sort of uh, the bike's awesome and you're loving it and that sort of thing but as you're riding along you sort of start to find a few little things that sort of annoy you and irk you a bit but yeah I'm still waiting for that to happen but it's not happening so we're bonding and gelling fantastically and, and like I said the more I ride it the more I like it and the better it gets. All right, I think I'll uh, wrap that up here. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Oh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I've got a Patreon now, and also I've got some new t-shirt designs you might like. Have a look at them below this video as well. Yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you for your continued support. And until next time, bye for now. Oh, here's a couple of videos you might be interested in watching. See ya.